Michael Clark, welcome to Show Studio. Thank you. So tell me, um, how did you first come to meet Lee McQueen? Oh, I do remember meeting him. Um, it wasn't arranged. Um, I think I met him for the first time properly. It was, I think it was Damien Harris had a book launch somewhere in central London. And I'd been in Scotland for several years with my mum, just having some distance from London and my work. So I come back to London, I stayed with my brothers, and I went out for the night to Damien's book launch and met Sarah Lucas and uh, Sarah Lucas uh, and Lee um, kind of became a, somewhat of a gang. Um, am I allowed to say there was a lot of drugs involved? It's absolutely fine. It's just quite an intense moment after being yeah. in Scotland, in the northeast of Scotland, in the wilderness, to being at this intense, um, yeah. High-octane like moment of, <sighs> mm. I think I think Lee's brother's, no, Lee's boyfriend's brother was my counsellor in Scotland, so we had that connection. Weird connection yeah, yeah, quite odd. And you liked him when you met him immediately? I liked what he did before I knew him. Ah. I'd see, I was aware of what he did and was aware that he was doing really interesting things from the beginning, I think. So what point was it where you met him? Was it just before you started working together? Because you started working No, together. no, ages before. We took oh, like okay. mid mid-90s, maybe. Oh, wow. I met him. Yeah. And so how come you were aware of what he did through mutual friends or through kind of the press? What year were the bumpsters? I mean, I was aware of those. Very oh, okay, wow, so that was really early. That was like 96, 95. Yeah, I guess my finger was on the pulse. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. And tell <laughs> me, did you become, you're making me laugh. Did you become friends kind of straight away or did that kind of develop slowly? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I certainly felt when we worked together, we were really, we were friends. He was a very good friend to me. But I think that maybe it was a little bit of, um, because of my intense relationship with Lee Bowery, possibly. Um, I don't know. Maybe um, there was a kind of that sort of dance that goes on when mm. you you like something, but you, you don't, you're not sure how much you want to reveal of that. Yeah, how much you want to give. And tell me, it's interesting, do you I think... Mean, sort of, we are boyfriends pretending to be, because my private life is a bit of a mess, and that was really good fun to go out and pretend we were having this mad affair. Mm. That was just for our own amusement. You weren't, though? No. <laughs> and tell me about how Don't the suggestion me, to work together came about. Was he... Because if you were friends for a few years... Yeah. Was it something you kind of always discussed, or was it something that kind of... Because you worked together, you know, Black and Deliverance were very close together. Yes. So what, what was happening before that? Were you discussing working together or...? I didn't see... I mean, I, 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 I'm not a socialising type of person, so if I did see Lee, it would be purely by chance. And, um, you know, somebody would, have, well, somebody would have had to actively, you know, try and make this happen. Mm. I imagine it's probably Sam. Um, but I guess there's a thing... I don't know if this is even relevant to say, but there was a thing where one is cautious about, it's like, if I have a composer I work with, he's mine, mm. and I don't want anyone else to work with him. If they do, it really fucking pisses me off, because he's mine. You know, it's like, I've got my relationship with him. So I guess I had some of those relationships within the fashion world, um, and I'm a very loyal person, so those would have had to maybe change in order mm. to allow me to embrace another mm. vision. So did the Lee Bowery, the, the relationship you had with Lee Bowery and Lee all died. the amazing work, but did that make you cautious to work with McQueen? And because obviously there are kind of similarities and references. Yes, yes, it would have done. It would have done. And I kind of, um, I'm, I kind of my, like my collabor collaborative relationships to be long term because they get better and better sure. the more you understand each other's work. So with Sarah Lucas, that was, that was beginning to be the case. That was in its early stages. Um, you know how these things are, it's a yeah. relationship, it's like being alone. Mm. And tell me about doing Deliverance, tell me about working on that. that uh, to be honest, that was very much Lee's project. Okay. I, I wouldn't say that was my work. I mean, I did my job, I came in and did what I was asked to do um, in my own unique way, but it wasn't coming from me. It was not coming from me. Of course, you know, Lee would have had the sensitivity to know that I would like something of that nature where things are falling apart, mm. people are losing control. Uh, yeah, it's, got, it's something that I would be drawn to, having mm. done the right of spring, where somebody dances themselves to death. Um, but also, I saw many parallels be between Lee's um, 
foundation, his very strong foundation in tailoring and mm. the skills, the classical skills, which are something in dance that I have an understanding of. Yeah. And we both had that understanding of how to do things properly, the craft, um, mm. and chose to use it to do something very other. Yeah, so That's exactly what I was going to ask you, yeah. actually, if you felt like your backgrounds, and as you say, that the kind of the education and, and the information that you had and that and that kind of willful desire to use it but to also kind of dismiss it at the same time if that's something that kind of united you that rebellion and seeing the handle clothes and understanding that the dynamic of a garment is something that he totally understood from inside mm. you know the people who sit in a chair and tell other people to do stuff he was not like that and mm. i'm not like that either um so lucas is not like that i don't want to pick it on her but mm. I, I'm sort of drawn to people who actually are the people who do the thing. I'm not saying you can't have assistance and things, but there is a wonderful thing. When you witness somebody discovering something mm. in front of you, it's astonishing to see. And well, he was a very thing. physical designer, wasn't he? Which must have appealed yes. in some ways. Yes, well, clothes are. And his clothes were very dynamic in they were, he activated, the clothes were activated not just by the people, but the mm. clothes themselves were yeah, in a state of drama, mm. aren't they? How do they feel to dance in? I don't have any, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, but you danced in the black show. <laughs> Hint. But you danced in the black show. I think I got, a, I got a black leather um, puffer jacket and he said, where'd you get that? And I said, I got it for, for doing your show. He said, obviously you were paid far too much. It's <laughs> <laughs> the true story. But, um, I didn't have any of these. <laughs> this is a shirt, but um, no, I, have, no, I have some things. I had some things that I happened to buy. Um, they're quite chavvy, <laughs> which I also like. Um, but the, the, there's um, some things can be quite constraining. Mm. Um, well, that's what's interesting with watching Deliverance because, as you say, they're kind of losing control. But it, it's it, the clothes. Yeah, well, the there's girls. A, there's a range of things, isn't there? Yeah, mm. there's kind of the amazing looking um, dresses in mm. the ballroom. But then they kind of when things decay and fall apart, and that very very heavy dress at the end is mm. phenomenal. So when you look at it, it's interesting to say it's not so much your work, it seems I'm like... I'm being honest, I'm just, yeah. you know, I'm not saying it's collaborative. A collaboration is something else. Mm. A collaboration for me is when people with equally strong ideas come together and they might fucking fight about it. Mm. Lee, Bowie, The Fool, myself, mm. we weren't all on the same page, as it were. Yeah. You know, we had very different things we were working on, but my experience is to let people work on exactly what they're interested in, then you'll get the best from them, and the whole thing is richer. That wasn't what our collaboration, what I did with Lee was to serve him mm. in that context. And so I was you always felt to. like you were working with him rather than collaborating with him? Yeah, but some people say that was me being lazy. It wasn't me being lazy, it was just there was a vision, they had an idea of what the show was going to be, and I don't always feel like fighting. You mm. know, um, so no. were there instances where you would propose your vision to him or was it very much his brief that you were working I with? I think some of the choreographic ideas I came up with weren't enjoyed. Some, some, some of what I did was too choreographed. Mm. I think Lee thought I was the one who was going to fall apart at, during the show. Mm. He was the one. He was, the, by the end he was saying, oh shit, I'm the one who got off my head. He thought I was going to do that, but I didn't. Mm. Um, I was on. Um, so maybe, maybe there was some anxiety on his part working with me that I would, you know, things would get cha chaotic, but they were really quite ordered. I remember that particular show, um, oh, Katie and Alistair, I've never seen them look so ill, so mm. worn out and, yeah, a death door. I don't know what it was about that show, it seemed to really be a big strain on them. I guess there were lots of people, mm. all those cues and things, it's a nightmare really. Um, models aren't always responsive, you know, sometimes you have to just deal with what's in front of you. If they can't get what you're talking about, you have mm. to find a way to make it fit within the context. Just say, imagine you've walked into the wrong show. You know, mm. what the fuck are you doing here? It's, those are the kinds of directions I was giving people mm. just to make something that worked. Mm. You have to kind of deal with the situation there and then, like cooking. Mm. I imagine it's not that Cooking's fun, as you say, working in fashion, sometimes like working on a fashion show where the pace is really quick and the models don't get it. and. <laughs> No, I mean, I, and I don't think it's true that not all not all models are stupid. Mm. Not all. So not that many happy memories of that show. Then. I'm joking. <laughs> I love models. I'm as dumb as they are, <laughs> um, and it's superficial. And uh, yeah. Do 
you get what I mean? I'm, obviously, I'm fascinated by the, that world. It's mm. even it's as extreme as the dance world, even further, maybe. That's actually something I was going to ask you, whether you felt like working with him, it kind of was an invitation into a world that you wouldn't have had access, not had access to, but that you perhaps wouldn't have experienced otherwise. <coughs> was that quite appealing? Well, I'd had my whole background with body map, and, but those being people who were doing something very much against what had been going exactly, on before. Yeah. So my experience was, was one of being involved in something. It's a kind of like a, uh, a bit like, you know, Diaghilev, the scale of things where you have many disciplines, you have choreography, mm -hmm. costume, music. That's what interested me. And working with these amazing talents that happened to all be in London at one time. Mm. So don't think this was kind of some other. It wasn't a breakthrough moment for me. Sorry. No, no, I know it wasn't. It by wasn't. Um, by the time you worked with him, I though, think he was that so maybe he learned more than I did. <laughs> from these days. No, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I think it was an equal. It was, I think he was equally learning something. Mm. Um, yeah. Mm. But it's interesting. Also, the lead, he was very direct about what he liked and what he didn't, and I'm quite responsive to that. I'm super sensitive, um, but I remember him being in rehearsal and responding to things. Most of the things I wanted to do, I'm going to suggest things he just you know, weren't going to be allowed, like holding mm. the cock of the person you were <laughs> dancing with. Silly things. And he said no to that. Yeah, but that's all right. I'm, kind of, I'm trying to get him to say no in a way. Mm and seeing how far he wants things to go. Mm. Lee Bowery, I mean, at the same time, mm. Lee Bowery, I was the one encouraging him to do the most outrageous things I could think of. Yeah. Like to fall down the stairs and be walked over by all the models. And he was very coy and quite cautious about any of that in the early days. Mm. But then he did it and it really had a very good, he got a very good response and he kind of stopped doing his things that he sold in department stores mm. and became this thing. This thing. Um, which was, I'm not saying I was, you know, he's not my monster, mm. but um, equally he could encourage me to do things that I would never dream of um, by the things he made me wear. He could become mm. another person, um, which perhaps Lee was interested in too. Mm. That's kind of what I wanted to ask though, when you've worked with someone like Lee Barry and you've kind of, you've pushed those things and you've discovered new things about yourself and pushed someone to try new things. <coughs> what, what gave you the energy to go back into that? Yeah, that high fashion world where it's, you know, there's a corporate side to that high fashion world and it's a show and you can't be as experimental. And well, when Lee and I started, Lee Berry and I started together, it, it was very much very conventional. I had a story, it was a Greek myth. I was working on a piece based on a Greek myth, um, Echo and Narcissus. He came to rehearsal dressed in his day where it was done in quite a formal way, but okay. that's how I knew and that's a way to begin. It, it veered off into another whole different yeah. area. At that time, it's just not a bad to be about Lee Barry, <laughs> but Lee would basically design what he was wearing himself. We mm. all had to wear what he was wearing. Mm. It's a very different vision from McQueen, wasn't doing that to yeah. people. Um, and I'm not so familiar with what McQueen did for men, to be honest. I'm much more aware of what he did for women. Mm. Um, and there was definitely a restrictive element to what he did mm. that is interesting for me. Um, because it causes that drama. And um, yet there was something about the danger of what he did, which um, as an audience member, you were kind of like on the edge of your seat. Mm. That's what I wanted to ask you, yeah, what, what did inspire you about his work? What was it that drew you to it? Well, I like being shocked. I like being, I, I think the bumsters were genius. Um, that's the first thing I saw and immediately saw that there was you know, that somebody was doing something other and then kind of people actually started to have their artists shine. Like young men, boys, and it's bizarre. <laughs> what was that about? It's still kind of going on. The trickle down effect of high fashion. Because when we, we did the bare artists like with Lee Berry, we kind of knew it wasn't the most attractive thing. Mm. You kind of jump up and down and you kind of jiggle. It's like J-Lo, I guess. But later <laughs> we did it first. But no, seriously, um, we were kind of too much as to whether we should do that or not, but it was sort of, um, I don't know, unexplored territory. Mm. I don't know. So you think he did break rules, Lee McQueen? Of course he did. But he understood the rules in order to, yeah. he was able to break them with that. I, I think it's people, the audience, um, it's not about people being in the know, but there are those people who can tell somebody has chosen to break rules. They could actually, they could work, they could um, obey the rules and do wonderful things. But they've chosen 
to go a different route, and that's uh, that's what interested me. Mm. So tell me more after working with him on Deliverance, and you, know, you did Black. Tell me about tell me about that show because you're actually in that show, the one where it's the Amex one in the box. You're dancing. Oh with Kate yeah, Moss. yeah. No, that was a that was a different sort of challenge and very exciting. Um, I kind of. Um, I guess was be becoming more aware of Lee's world, mm. um, and yeah, I, I, I would, I, I really, I guess Lee and I should have worked on something together, which was not one of his shows, perhaps maybe something separate. Did you have ideas for things you wanted to do? Um, I'm quite, I'm, I'm, I'm quite good at identifying who's the right person to do something for me. Mm. You know, there may be a character that he would be absolutely right to do something for, but he was doing other things in theatre. I'm mm. sorry, I'm like, I feel like I'm letting you down because <laughs> we weren't like Cunningham and Cage. No, but we should have been, maybe. We maybe ought to have been. We should have been boyfriends. It might have been quite funny. I'll <laughs> <laughs> just say that for fun. But we did pretend. It was also quite good fun too. Did you love him? Did I love him? I did. I cared for him, and I really. Um, I, I. He's not the first person I know who's committed suicide, and I. Um, I get that wrong. I, I would never have thought he'd be somebody to do that. Um, but of course, I can totally relate to his mother thing. Mm. As a gay man, it is a very difficult thing to come to terms with the death mm. of one's mother, Billy McKenzie. Mm. Yeah, it's not unusual. Do you think what drew you together? And it sounds like from talking <coughs> to you, it was. It was more the friendship and the emotions and less the work. I think we come from, both come from quite poor backgrounds and what we have gone on to do would be completely unexpected. Um, so we would have had that in common and the determination to, to achieve that is, you can't, you shouldn't, one mustn't underestimate how much um, willpower that, and just, yeah, mm. how much that involves. I don't even want to talk about his death, but I, it, it, it I feel disappointed in him for doing what he did because, um, and that's awful to say that because I'm sure he wasn't even thinking in those terms, but um, he struck me as somebody who had such, I just to even talk about it really, so mm. I don't know why I got into that, but obviously there's a fascination with death, but I think we all have and we have to kind of embrace, um, whether it's death or darkness or stillness or, you know, not being able to make things um, has to be interesting too. But um, oh, I can't say anything about it. Sorry. Mm, okay. I think Lee could and I could have done a hell of a lot more than we did, and maybe just circumstances were such. I was I, I left London for my sanity when everyone started to become big, like pop groups and artists, and you know Lee was part of that. Yeah. Bit pop that made me go. Yeah. Mm. I don't want to be part of that. It's interesting because that's what I was <coughs> going to ask. Did you feel like the timing, in a way, was not quite right for you guys? Because you did work together, obviously, on projects. But maybe if you'd started working together earlier, or as you said, worked on things that weren't his shows, I find it really interesting that you say that you maybe would have done more. I've got an I've, I've got an interest in integrity in the people that I work with, and Lee certainly had that. But I kind of, and also loyalty. I kind of I like to relationships develop over time, you don't work with somebody that's like having sex. The first time it's not always the best. Mm. And maybe over time you begin to have an understanding and um, yeah, a dialogue begins. I think it's, uh, it's an ongoing process. Mm. I'm, I'm sad that that wasn't something that I could continue to have with Lee. And did you have specific ideas that you didn't get to sort of do with him? Um, I'm not sure if you were like that. No, but I was, I was very aware of what he was doing and fascinated by where it might go next. Um, yeah. Mm. And tell me, you said you'd been to see Savage Beauty when you were in America. Did, yes. you, did you like it? It was so full of people. It was so full. It was like completely, it was huge. It was the biggest thing uh, there. So I was very aware of having to move on, move on. <laughs> but was that not quite amazing to see all those people? Well, I would see that. It's unfortunate somebody has to die. Mm. Um, yeah. And one last question. I mean, you didn't explain very much about being in black. Tell me about dancing with Kate in front of all those people, with Kate Moss. Well, for me, it was, uh, it was, uh, she would say it was a dream come, come true. It was for me too. But uh, it was kind of uh, terrifying because uh, she has her own... Yeah, one can tell somebody what to do, but ultimately 
is their own body. And uh, <laughs> I was, I was, once I had, I had my head between her legs and I was spinning her own, she could not choose what to do. <laughs> <laughs> She's mine. No, I, I think it's a lovely moment to share. Mm. Is that one of your favourite moments from working with him? What is your favourite moment from working with him? Oh, silly things, I think. Silly things. Um, I don't know, silly personal things, sweet things that he did, yeah, his, cons his consideration, yeah. It's a nice thing to remember. Yes.